Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Her sister was stabbed 18 times. I saw blood everywhere. She became a suspect. Everybody was crying except for Jody. You think you're sitting across from a murderer. You heard your grandfather scream, but you didn't hear your sister. She'll take a polygraph. Did you stab Risa? No. And face her accuser. Well, Laura says she brought a picture she thinks is evidence. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Today, we have some very important business. We are going to try and unravel a cold case that left a small town of Salisbury shocked and one young girl's life forever haunted by suspicion. On June 15, 1984, 15-year-old Risa Dawn Trexler was brutally murdered, stabbed 18 times in her grandparents' home. But the crime was never solved and the case went cold. The victim's 13-year-old sister, Jody, was the prime suspect. But no matter how many times she was interrogated by police, Jody maintained her innocence. Now, it has been over three decades since her sister was killed, and the townspeople haven't stopped gossiping, some of them accusing Jody of murdering her only sibling. Well, that's why Jody wrote to me. She said she is finally ready to tell her side of the story. She says she wants to end all the rumors once and for all. Take a look. My sister Risa and I were close. We had typical sister fights, nothing major. As we became teenagers, I definitely looked up to her. June 15, 1984 was a typical day. My sister had a couple friends that had come over. We all hung out. Her friends left later that afternoon and my sister went next door to my grandparents' house. It had been about an hour. I had just been hanging out in the house. I started to walk to my grandparents' house and noticed that my grandmother's car, my grandfather's truck were both gone and the front door was shut. So I just assumed my sister had left with one of them, which was not unusual. So I came back into our house. I was in my bedroom. I heard my grandfather screaming. I looked out the window and he was coming out the front door. His hands were in fists and he was just screaming hysterically. I called 911. I ran back next door and I saw my sister in their spare bedroom. The entire room was just covered in blood. It was, it was a horrible sight. And I saw my sister on the floor. She was mostly covered up with a blanket. I could see part of her face and her hair. I don't remember much more about the day Risa was murdered. It was just a big blur at that point on. That's the house my sister was killed in. A few days later, we were in the funeral home. There were hundreds of people. I remember being puzzled seeing her in the casket because she didn't look like herself. They had put stuff over her face to cover the wounds. She had been stabbed so many times in her face and neck, and they had to cover all that. It made her look so different and strange. It just seemed unreal. A woman came up and got in my face and said, now, aren't you the sister? Tell me exactly what happened. It was insane. I was 13 years old. I was a child. I was very confused. Well, imagine after all that, the devastated 13-year-old Jody becomes suspect number one. I don't know why I was made the primary suspect other than the fact that I was home alone and so close when it happened. Right after her funeral, the detectives started interrogations with me. They would just make me go through details of the day over and over. I guess they were hoping I might slip up and say something different. They'd ask me point blank, did you kill your sister? And of course I said no. The police made me give spit samples, hair samples, fingernail samples. My mother and father weren't allowed in the room with me. 
I was scared. I kept thinking to myself, are they going to arrest me for this? I felt like they had it in for me. At that point, they harassed me for a while, but once we had an attorney, they knew there was nothing they could do legally. They eventually left me alone. I believe they interviewed pretty much everyone in my family, but to my knowledge, I don't think they made my grandfather go through any kind of interrogations like they had done with me. If they did, I was not told about it. I guess they thought I was just too young. It was very odd that I was interrogated so much more than any other adult was. Well, Jody says for 34 years, she's had to endure people in the town calling her a murderer. After my sister was murdered, most of my friends could no longer really have anything to do with me. They were either afraid of me or their parents were afraid of me. The whole town immediately turned against me. There was way too much gossip going on. School was awful. I would go home from school every day and cry. I'm sure my parents were just as confused. For a while, I think my mom wondered. I'm not gonna say that I think she was convinced that I had killed my sister, but she would say things like, Jody, now, if, you sure there's nothing you wanna tell me? You can tell me anything, I'll still love you no matter what. She would just hit around that she wanted me to confess something, but I had nothing to confess. On June 15th last year, which was the anniversary of my sister's death, someone had posted really horrible things about me, accusing me of killing her. They didn't come out and say my name, but I can tell by the things they were saying, they were referring to me. It still bothers me. I'm not the kind of person that really cares what people think about me, except where that's concerned. Well, Jody, it's been 34 years. Yes. Why talk about this now? Uh, something I've thought about for a long time. I've always, my whole life, I've wanted some way to be able to prove I did not do it. And I watched the show a lot. <laughs> I saw a lot of the help that you've given people. Let's talk about the day of the murder. Your house and your grandparents' house where the murder took place are adjacent to one another. Yeah. In fact, you've described your grandparents' house as almost another room to your house. You kids just went back and forth like it was just an extension of your own house, right? That's correct. And you say that early June 15th, 1984, uh, two boys, friends, came over. They're friends of yours or, or friends of your sisters? Sister. Uh, so they were both 15? Yes. Okay, and they had been there and were making sandwiches, right? And just kind of hanging out? Yes, we all made sandwiches for lunch and just yeah. hung out, listened to music. Were either of these a boyfriend of yours or your sister's or just friends? Just friends. They were friend boys. Yes. Not One boyfriends. lived in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. so they had been friends with my sister for uh -huh. years. Were they ever considered suspects? I know one of them was in particular. He um, moved, away, moved out of town not long after that, which I think made everyone more suspect of him, thinking that he was fleeing. Packed um, up and left? Uh -huh. Right. So you say then the boys were there two or three hours making sandwiches, hanging out, listening to music, then the boys left. Correct. And Risa goes next door to your grandparents' house alone. And what would cause her to go over there in the middle of the day by herself. We didn't even need a reason. And where were you when she went next door? I don't remember exactly where I was in the house, but I was at our house. Yes. Did she tell you she was going over there? No. How'd you know she went over there? She wasn't in the house anymore. We just knew. That's just what we did. There weren't any cars over there. Correct. So you thought what? They were running errands or something? Yeah, I just assumed she left with my grandmother or my grandfather. Okay. And then... You say an hour later, roughly, you see your grandpa exit the house, but now he's screaming. You heard the screams first? Yeah, where our bedroom was located, we shared a bedroom. It had a very big window, and through the window you could pretty much see their entire house, mm -hmm. including the front porch. Mm -hmm. And so I was in our bedroom. This was summertime. We had those roll-out type of windows. They were open. So I was in our room, and I heard the scream, and looked out the window and saw my grandfather coming from the front door. When you see him run out of the house screaming, what do you think? I didn't know what was going on. I knew something was wrong. Something had happened. He was screaming, help. And I ran out and ran next door, 
And he wouldn't let me past him. He just kept yelling, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. So I ran back home, called 911. Did you have any sense who you were calling an ambulance for? Did you, did you wonder? Did you think it was your grandmother? Your, yeah. I, I didn't know. I didn't know if it was my grandmother, my sister, what had happened. I was just, I certainly wasn't expecting something like that. So you call 911 mm -hmm. and say, I need an ambulance, mm -hmm. okay? And what'd you do then? I ran back next door. Your grandfather's still in front of the house? Yes. He tried, I, I ran past him. He tried to stop me from running by him, but I got by him. You go in the front door. Mm -hmm. There's a little entry area there. And then what's the first room you enter? You, it, well, you go in the front door, you enter the living room. But you see anything in the living room? Mm -hmm. no, Look normal, no. nothing overturned, nothing? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, I ran into the hallway and the kitchen's to this side, bathroom, and then the bedroom's to this side. And I turned the corner, the bedroom door was open, I looked in. And what did you see? I don't even know how long I stood there before the paramedics came in and pulled me away. Was your sister alive at this point? And later, you think this woman stabbed her Sister. The weapon was never found. You think you're sitting across from a murderer. Did you actually run into the room or just into the hallway? Into the doorway. Okay. I, I saw into the room. I saw the mess. And what did you see? Blood, a mess. I saw my sister on the floor. She was mostly covered up by a blanket. I could see her hair. I could see part of her face, mm -hmm. and just that was it. And when you say she was covered up, uh, was the blanket blood soaked or was it still dry? It had blood on it. I don't, Sorry? It had blood on it. It was soaked it's through? Like, yeah. With blood? Pretty covered, yeah. Uh huh. And was your sister alive at this point? To my knowledge, no. She wasn't moving, she wasn't, she wasn't moaning, moving. she wasn't saying anything? Who covered her with the blanket? I don't know. Did you ever ask your grandfather how she got covered up? I just assumed. Did you recognize the blanket? Yes, it was the blanket from off the bed, the bed that belonged in there. So it was a blanket of opportunity. Someone pulled it off of the bed and onto her. I mean, it came from the bed yes. onto her? Yes. There, I don't even know how long I stood there before the paramedics came in and pulled me away. Was she dressed? I don't know. She was covered. Did you touch the body? No. I didn't get past the doorway. Now, according to um, investigators, news reports, everything has come together, um, have reported, and I, I don't warrant this to be accurate, um, that she was naked in the front bedroom of your grandparents' house and that she was found at 5.08 p.m. Uh, that the room was torn up, that there was blood everywhere. Uh, when you looked in the room, did it look like there had been a fight, a struggle? Were things in disarray? I really didn't notice. I saw blood everywhere, but I didn't. I, I guess I saw her and was looking more at her and trying to figure out what was going on than I did notice anything else in the room. Okay. It, the reports say that she was stabbed multiple times and that there was a portion of the knife actually left in the body, That's what I was that it was broken off in the body. Perhaps assault inconclusive. Uh, do you know if your sister was sexually active? Not that I knew of. You don't know that she had a boyfriend that she was she experimenting with sexually or had... Not at the time, or if she did, she didn't tell me. She wasn't telling you. But your instinct as a sister, do you know if she was, you know, slipping off and being with a boy? I don't think so. Your guess would be no. Right. So do you think your sister was a virgin? I don't know. I don't know. I know she had a boyfriend before all of this happened. They had broken up before this had all happened. Um, she never told me that she had had sex, but I don't... Is that the kind of thing that you and she would talk about? 
I went to her for more stuff than she went to me with things. I was the younger bratty sister, so mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I don't know. She never told me that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if she would have. There was no forced entry. Um, there was nothing stolen, according to the reports. Do you know otherwise? Um, and no arrests were ever made because it said there was insufficient evidence. And so the case is open, but it's considered a cold case. Well, coming up, the daughter of the town's former police captain is here. We're going to find out why she says, in her opinion, everything leads back to Jody. We'll hear from her when we come back. I feel that Jody had something to do with this. How does Jody know that Risa was stabbed 18 times? To my knowledge, this information was never made public. I feel that Jody went in and killed her sister out of rage and out of hate. And later... Can I ask Jody a question? I don't know whether she'll speak to you about it or not, but you can ask her. What business is it of yours? I started hanging out with some of the wrong crowd. I started getting into drugs and drinking and just partying all the time. I skipped school just about every day. And a lot of my behavior was related to my sister's murder. As someone had given me a pill, I didn't ask what it was. I just took it and I ended up going to sleep for a couple of days. It turned out to be a Thorazine. I ended up going to a drug rehab at 15. I was there for a couple months. I wasn't actually addicted to anything. I was just so rebellious and angry at the world at that point. When Jody was 13 years old, she says her 15-year-old sister, her only sibling, Risa, was brutally murdered next door in their grandparents' home. Now, it was never solved, and Jody says she became the prime suspect until the case went cold. Now, we talked to many of the townspeople, and some of them accused Jody of killing her sister. Most were afraid to come forward. They were afraid to come with, show their face, give their names. But Laura, whose father was the police captain at the time of the murder, says she's ready to be the voice for Risa. I grew up right down the street from Jody and Risa Trexler. My recollections of Risa is that she had a heart of gold. I always had a kind word to say to people. Jody, on the other hand, seemed very dark. Jody was the black sheep of the family. There was a lot of competition and tension between the two sisters. There was one time in particular I overheard her say to her sister, I hate you. I just wish you were dead. On the actual day of the murder, my family was on vacation. I heard about the murder the day after, and I was shocked. When the family walked into the church, everybody was crying, except for Jody. She had a very somber, dark expression on her face. A couple months after Reese's death, the rumors started circulating in the community. At the time, my father was the police captain in Salisbury. He was not at liberty to disclose any information. I didn't have a very strong opinion about it until about five years ago. What always seemed to bother me about Jody is that she was more interested in clearing her name versus trying to find her sister's real killer. Last week, I had a dream, and it was Risa sitting there telling me, help me find my real killer. She was holding a great big heart, and in the middle of the heart was a picture of Jody. So she trying to tell me that she always loved her sister, or in her heart, she knows that Jody is the killer. I would like to know, how does Jody know that Risa was stabbed 18 times? How does she know that the first two stab wounds killed her? To my knowledge, this information was never made public. Without a shadow of a doubt, I feel that Jody had something to do with this. I feel that Jody went in and killed her sister out of rage and out of hate and out of anger and built up emotions over the years. Laura, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, sir. Uh, You believe that you speak for a lot of people in the town. Yes, sir, I do. The last thing you said on the tape, you think you're sitting across from a murderer. Correct. You think that this woman, when she was 13 years old, stabbed her sister 18 times, including in the face, with such rage that she broke off the blade and left part of it in her body? Yes, sir, because the weapon was never found. And 
you say that the gossip in the town uh, quotes are just Jody killed Risa, heard the sister did it, it must be nice to know you got away with it. These are the things, things that, that people have you've said. heard some of them, you've heard some of them. Um, now, your first suspicion was because you heard her say she wished her sister was dead. I had heard that on the school bus one time whenever she said she hated her sister. My first suspicion was whenever it all came out that she didn't hear anything. She was right next door. She was a mere five to ten steps away from where the murder happened and she didn't hear anything. Okay, five to ten steps would be from here to the edge of the dark part of the stage. Exactly. That's how close their houses were. You say Risa had a heart of gold and that Jody was an unfriendly, dark loner. She was always to herself. She didn't have a lot to say to people. She kept to herself. She was not friendly to anybody. Where Risa never met a stranger. She was always willing to help people. That seems like a gargantuan leap to murder. How did you conclude that she's the killer? Well, because of circumstantial evidence. I okay. mean, she was right there. She didn't hear anything. She was in the home next door. What else? And also, I mean, instead of coming on national TV to clear her name, why is she not trying to go on national TV to find your sister's killer? Do you know whether Risa screamed out or not? I don't know. You heard your grandfather scream, but you didn't hear your sister. First off, the houses aren't five or ten feet apart. I mean, that's just wrong. Number two, and I don't know if she killed her sister or not, we will talk about that, but uh, you, you say she didn't hear her scream. Somebody stabs you in the neck or the heart, you're not going to say a damn thing. This is true. You, Coming up, Laura says Jody could have ended this town's gossip years ago. What does she mean by that? What one of Reese's best friends wants to ask Jody a question when we come back? If it was an intruder or somebody that was random, would they have not raped your sister? How would that make her the murderer? My mother never would sell their house or move away. I tried to talk her into it several times, but she always said that she felt like she would be leaving my sister behind. My grandparents sold the house about two years after my sister died. They tried to stick it out. My grandfather could never look in that bedroom again. I live in my childhood home now, and I walk out the door every day and see the house that my sister died in. Well, it's been 34 years since Jody's sister, Risa, was brutally stabbed to death. Laura says she lived just a few houses away from the girls and that things in her mind just don't add up. Now, Laura claims that Jody hated her sister, was jealous of her, and truly believes that Jody had something to do with Risa's murder. And what the something is that she says she had to do with it was wielding the knife and hacking her to death with 18 stab wounds in her face and the rest of her body. Now, one of the reasons you say is she was there, which that is a legitimate consideration, opportunity. Yes. She was there, so she had opportunity. How do you cross uh, Grandpa off the list? Because he was there there. He was in the house. Well, I crossed Grandpa off the list because, I mean, of the feelings that Jody has always expressed about how she did hate Risa. Jody was mm -hmm. always just... So was, that's the next would, element motive. You, well, you, then could I ask Jody a question? You'll have to ask. I don't know whether she'll speak to you about it or not, but you can ask her. What is your fondest memory of Risa and you growing up? I have all kinds of memories of but Risa. But what stands right. out? What business is it of yours? I have lots of fond memories, but I don't feel like I'm obligated to share them with you. You said, how does she know that she was stabbed 18 times? Correct. How do my you know? My parents told me. My family told me. My father had a copy of the autopsy report. Yeah. Hell, I've got a copy of the autopsy yeah, I, report. I brought it along. So, I mean, here's the graphic from it. I'm sorry to put this up in front of you, but I know you've seen it. 
Uh, this is the autopsy body diagram that shows the 18 stab wounds. If it was an intruder or somebody that was random, would they have not raped your sister? How would that make her the murderer? If it was a male that had attacked a female profiling, it would apparently seem that somebody would have been raped. Let me read you something from the autopsy report. Have you read the autopsy report? No, sir, report? I've never seen it. Spermatozoa are present. <laughs> Wasn't mine. <laughs> How do you uh, how do you account for that? I can't answer for what had Reese had done earlier that day. I mean, it could have happened earlier in the day. True. Well, joining us on the phone is Beth, who says she was Reese's best friend. She says Jody was always jealous of her sister, and is curious why she's wanting to clear her name and not find the killer. Beth, do you believe that uh, Jody is guilty here? I believe that Jody knows something that she's not sharing. So you feel like while she may not be the actual killer that she knows who is? I do. The first time I spoke to Jody after Risa was killed, her first question to me was, what are you going to do now? Your best friend's dead. Not, oh, my sister's dead. There were no tears, there was no emotion, there was nothing beyond. And that's what I've received from her every time that I've seen her over the last 34 years. Why is she not there to find Reese's killer? Why is she there to clear her name? If she's the primary suspect and she, by being here today, eliminates herself from the suspect list, does that not open this investigation up to a whole new category of focus? Sure, but to me she has a guilty conscience. My goal today is to help one of two people. Either help Risa by finding out whether her killer is sitting to my right, or if Jody is falsely accused, help her by getting out of the sights of people like yourself and Laura who are casting a shadow of suspicion and doubt on her and her living with that. Coming up, Jody's daughter always wanted to know what happened the day of the murder, but felt it was too sensitive a topic to ask her mother. Danielle's thoughts when we come back. grandma told me that my aunt was murdered. Last year I was at work and I was asked, did your mom love her sister? I just rolled my eyes and walked away. My mom's had to go her whole life knowing that people are still out there that think she's killed her sister. Risa was in my high school class with me when she was killed. There's always been a group of people who thought that Jody committed the murder. Last June, there was a posting on social media regarding Reese's death. One post said, karma is a bitch. Can't imagine carrying that guilt all these years. I responded, yes, I agree on all counts. I felt guilty because my comments were inappropriate. I'm 100% certain that I have never seen guilt in Jody, only grief. Without irrefutable proof, I am not gonna put that guilt on her. For over three decades, people in the small town of Salisbury have been speculating that Jody killed her sister when they were teens. Now, Jody says those suspicions have just almost ruined her life. Laura grew up in the same town, went to the same church, rode the same school bus as the sister. She believes Jody's family helped cover up the murder. But Jody's 20-year-old daughter, Danielle, says you can't believe everything you hear. Take a look. When I was five years old, I learned my middle name was Risa. I was named after my mom's sister. It wasn't until fourth grade that my grandma told me that my aunt was murdered. She told me that both my great grandpa and my mom were suspects of the murder. When I was 12, I started at a new school 
and I made a friend. I had invited her to my house for a sleepover, and when her mom found out who my mom was, she wasn't allowed to come over anymore. I was early high school when I really got interested and started asking more questions about it. I've never heard my mom talk about finding Risa or seeing her sister like that. I've always wanted to know, but I've never asked my mom out of respect. I think I was about two, two years old. So Risa would have been four? About four, yeah. And she was two years and two months older than me. She would only tell me general things about the murder because I would only ask general things about the murder. Last year I was at work and I was asked, did your mom love her sister? I knew what he was insinuating. I just rolled my eyes and walked away. It's hard for me to believe that my mom's had to go her whole life knowing that people are still out there that think she's killed her sister. Just because she's an easy target doesn't mean that she's the one who did it. Danielle, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. You believe your mother killed your aunt? Absolutely not. Do I think she has the heart to kill, hurt anyone? No. To me, I mean, if it was my sister or somebody very close to me, I would be sobbing uncontrollably. Uh -huh. Do you know what you're talking about when you say what's appropriate for a 13-year-old? I do not have a norm. I do not have a norm per se, but to me, I would be very upset. You don't have a norm per se? No, sir. Uh -huh. I don't have one. I mean, to okay. me, I would be very upset crying. Okay, so that's you. Yes. I think it's funny how she keeps talking about me being such a quiet loner when I was a kid. I was the ADD brat that no one could ever get to shut up. I used to get spankings in school because I was always getting in some kind of trouble. But you were not friendly to people. Yes, I was. She wasn't friendly to you? She wasn't friendly to a lot of people. She was not friendly to a lot of people. Yeah. Well, Laura says she brought a picture she thinks is evidence. Um, and this is the picture that you think is evidence that she's the killer. Can you explain how this is evidence that she's the killer? In my eyes, I mean, it's like you're admitting to something. She's dark there, like I have described her. That was Halloween. That Could was you Halloween. not dress up as something else? Would you... I mean, that's kind I of was like a mocking. vampire victim. Can you see the mark? But it's still back? mocking. I've been that. I, I've, I've been okay, a well, vampire well, well, victim. Well, I, mean, I, I, I need to get the theory here. That <laughs> she's dark there? She's dark. She's mocking, more or less. I mean, could you not dress up something else for Halloween? Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, you had another question. If she's so innocent, why won't she take a polygraph? Correct. Well, she did. And I have not opened the envelope. Uh, but she did take a polygraph with Jack Tremarco. And as you know, in my opinion, Jack Tremarco is the best of the best. We're going to find out the results when we come back. Hi, are you Jody? I am. I'm Jack Tremarco. I'm happy that I took the polygraph test. It's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I'm ready to get all of these rumors behind me. I've wanted to clear my name all my life. Even back when I was 13 years old, when the police were putting me through interrogations, I offered many times and told them to give me a lie detector test. It never happened. When I saw the post last year, that's when I really started thinking seriously about contacting Dr. Phil show. I would do whatever I needed to do to shut down the rumor mill, put an end to this. I have nothing to hide, and I'll do what it takes. Now, we reached out to Jack Tremarco. He is a top polygraph operator on the globe, in my opinion. He's a former FBI special agent, FBI polygraph examiner. Uh, he trains these folks to do this. He's conducted over 3,500 polygraph examinations in his extraordinary career. Let me ask you, um, did you feel like this was a fair test? 
Very much. And you did not detect any countermeasures. She wasn't on any medications that negate the protocol. You wouldn't have gone forward, but just so people know, you screen for that and detect. Right. We uh, we discussed uh, any um, subject that came up. As I told Jody, there were no secrets in this case. Uh, there would be no tricks or surprises. That it would take at least an hour and a half. And uh, I asked her about medications, pain, medical concerns, how much sleep she got. I wanted to be sure that she was a suitable candidate for polygraph testing. Mm -hmm. You ask one question two different ways because that is the purest protocol, correct? Right. It's called specific issue testing. Well, you ask one question two different ways. Mm -hmm. And the questions that were asked were, did you stab Risa? And your answer was? No. Did you stab Risa with a knife? And your answer was? No. And the results are that you were non-deceptive, you were telling the truth, you did not <laughs> stab your sister. Um, it says here that when the results were scored, there was a seven plus with a two plus needed on this particular protocol, so this wasn't a close call. No. Uh, she would have needed a minus four or above to have failed, a plus two or above to have passed, and obviously plus seven is well above that. Laura? What do you have to say? You wanted the polygraph administered. I would like to say formally that I apologize to her for accusing her. Thank you for saying that. So the question is, who could it have been? I have said, when you have a primary focus and that focus can be eliminated, you take that out of the way, you really advance the investigation. We're going to talk about all of that and some profiling information when we come back. This is my sister's grave. It's a sad feeling for me. I don't come out here as often as I should. I miss her every day. If I could say anything to Risa, I would just tell her how sorry I am that this had to happen to her. I can't imagine the horror that she must have gone through. No one should have to die such a horrible death. And I would tell her that we miss her. And, <laughs> and I wish she could know my children. I wish my children could know her. She didn't fit the profile. A profile is a, a study of a particular group. In this case, the group would be lust murderers. Based on what I read in the reports, this probably, not certainly, but probably was a, a lust murder or an attempt at a sexual assault which ended in a homicide. Um, <clears throat> that having been said, um, I would then uh, research studies that have been done, interviews that have been done with all lust murderers that are in the program, and then uh, learn the probabilities and tendencies that are associated with that group. And first and foremost, the lust murderer is a man. The way you describe this crime, does she describe this crime the way somebody guilty of murder would describe it? Uh, no. Uh, when I read the uh, email that you sent to the show asking for Dr. Phil's assistance, you described your sister's death as uh, br brutally murdered. And usually a criminal will use minimization in their verbiage. In other words, the real murderer might have said that Riza was stabbed with a knife and died. And 18 times and a broken off blade. We're talking rage here. Rage, rage. And the blanket jumped out at me. Uh, I didn't know about the blanket, that her body had been covered up. Normally, 
that is the sign of a spouse or someone very close to her from the opposite sex that wanted to cover up her nude body um, because they usually don't want even police detectives or investigators or people from the coroner to see that loved one even in a deceased state with no clothes on. And that's why we're saying eliminating you opens up the focus and hopefully they'll ask for help going forward. I want to thank all of my guests today. A uh, special thanks to Jack Tremarco. Jack, we really appreciate it. I'm sure you appreciate it. Thanks so much. So long. Jack.